How you doing guys? Today's quick video on how to test these oven elements. So I've got two different ovens here. Obviously the one that you've seen just before and this one here. Now the difference is, this one here, the elements, you just pull them out. And if you have a look on them, there's two wee hooks there that slide right in that hole there. And you just got to make sure that they clip into the harness in the back there. Now you'll probably find on old ovens, see that white ceramic stuff around the uh, harness? That tends to disintegrate and break off. So sometimes you may need to buy a new wiring harness when you buy an element. If the element's not faulty and it's not getting power, then check the harness hasn't disintegrated and things haven't disconnected in there. So this oven here is a Simpson, just in case you're wondering. And the other one here, Fisher, Fisher and Paykel. Now unfortunately with this brand, these ones here are bolted in underneath this top. So what you have to do is get in behind here, take all the screws off the back, lift this up. There'll be a couple of wee screws under here as well most likely. And then you'll have to get your hands in and unbolt them. They do tend to be hard to access sometimes. So Sparky's going to cost a fortune. So when you buy a new element, Make sure you get it like for like, do a measurement, and just measure across the width of the element. Also take a note of these pins, these are down down. You can get ones that these wee terminals here are facing the other way, and therefore a different type of connector block. You can shove them in there, but it's not, not the most ideal outcome. So make sure you get the right ones when you're out. Now for all these new elements, you want a Smith's brand one, these guys specialise in oven parts, and it's where I get all my oven parts from. So this here is a new element. Right, so enough of that smack, let's get into the testing. So what you want to do first, grab out your multimeter, set your multimeter onto ohms. That one there. And it should show OL on it. Now before we test the oven, we want to ensure that these leads on the bottom of the multimeter are functioning correctly. So what you do, Get the two ends of these and stick them together and you should see zero ohms on your meter or close to. There might be a little bit of resistance in these leads so 0 0.2 is fine. Right, next thing you want to do is hook one end onto one of these and one end onto the other like so. Make sure that they've got good contact with the element there. If you can hold them both down it'll be good. Now what you'll see on the meter is a result of a stuffed element. So if this says mega ohms up here, M, and it's got the wee ohm symbol, that's telling you there's a shitload of resistance in this that shouldn't be in there. So on this element here, we might be able to see a wee blown mark that indicates it's blowing. So visibly, I can't see anything on the outside that shows it's blowing. So obviously, it's on the inside of the coil here that something's gone awry. So we'll get rid of that one. Next one. Same again, one on either side of the element. Now it might take two seconds to get to this result, but it should stay on this result as you're holding them on the on the end of the coil. If the result changes, if it cre keeps creeping up higher and higher and higher, so if it goes from ohms to kilo ohms to mega ohms, then it's buggered. Also, a lot of the time you'll find blown ones, they've just got the OL, which means there's actually no physical connection between these two ends of the element. So as I was saying, if your meter says this, the element's stuffed. If your meter says this, the element's also stuffed. And if it's got a K and an ohm symbol, it's also stuffed. This result here is perfectly fine, and the element will function fine. So to reinsert one of these elements, slot it in there, and make sure that the ceramic doesn't crumble. And there you go, she's in. Make sure you go and check out my other videos. Cheers.